Hello students and welcome to your first video on conservation. So conservation is a really, really big topic. It has to do with taking all the ideas from ecology and then applying those to the future of our planet. So there's a lot of different things going on there. But one thing that we hear a lot in our discussion of conservation is the idea of biodiversity. And so we're gonna start off by looking at what biodiversity is and a little bit about how we can quantify it and calculate it. Specifically, by the end of this video, we should be able to calculate the Simpsons Diversity Index and analyze the biodiversity of communities using the Simpsons Diversity Index. So let's start with just a quick overview about why biodiversity is important. So from ecology and from looking at food webs, we know that all these different organisms in an ecosystem are connected based on who eats who and what other um, relationships exist within the ecosystem. Biodiversity boosts that whole ecosystem. It maintains those connections and it allows for the whole ecosystem to function. There's this idea of keystone species we're gonna look at a little bit more later. And those can be some extra critical species, but maintaining biodiversity of an entire ecosystem is gonna be important for that ecosystem itself. In addition, um, if we can maintain biodiversity, we are also helping us as humans because we're allowing for a lot of economic things to be maintained. So, for example, if you have a larger number of plant species, you can have a larger variety of crops. So we eat crops. Having a larger variety of that is going to be important for nutrition, important for maintaining those in the future, important for avoiding pests, um, and just important for us as humans. If we have greater species diversity, then we can have more sustainability for all life forms because when we have diversity, things are better able to um, come back from any sort of disturbances. Healthy ecosystems can better withstand and recover from a variety of disasters for that reason. So more biodiversity does all of these different things. It does a lot, a lot, a lot more things. This is just a couple. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that biodiversity does for the ecosystem and then for us as humans. This is not even remotely a full list. This is just what I happen to think of when I was quickly writing out some of these things. So the idea is that a healthy biodiversity in an ecosystem provides a number of natural services for everyone. So for those who are part of the natural ecosystem and also for us as humans. So if we're looking at some of those ecosystem services, Biodiversity is going to be important in maintaining a lot of things that are balanced. So a lot of cycles that exist within that ecosystem, the more biodiversity, the better those cycles can be maintained. For example, water cycle. So water resources are better maintained when there's a larger biodiversity. Um, creation of soil. So from our discussion of succession, we know that soil can be really, really important in an area and the more or better soils are formed with more biodiversity. Um, nutrient storage and recycling, so that's things like carbon cycle, that's things like nitrogen cycle, um, those are going to be maintained with better biodiversity, better maintenance. Um, pollution breakdown and absorption, so more biodiversity is better able to address other problems in the ecosystem. Um, climate stability is maintained with biodiversity. Maintenance of the ecosystem itself maintained with biodiversity. Recovery from unpredictable events. I think it's a really interesting one and it's maintained with greater biodiversity. In addition to the ecosystem services, biodiversity also so help, help support biological resources. So things like food. If there's a larger biodiversity, there's more options with food. It also has to do with things that we may still be discovering as humans about the world. So things like medicines. A lot of medicines come from nature and a lot of those things haven't been discovered yet. Most of them haven't been discovered yet. And biodiversity is where those things exist. Wood products that we use a lot of, ornamental, that means like pretty plants, um, breeding stocks for lots of things, population reservoirs, all of this is maintained with greater biodiversity. In addition to the ecosystem and the biology, we're also maintaining our future. So greater biodiversity is able to maintain greater biodiversity. So the more that already exists, the more that continue to exist. So diversity in genes, diversity in species, diversity in ecosystems, those are all maintained. There's also some sort of social benefits that we we have when we have a greater biodiversity. Um, research, education, monitoring, just learning about the world around us is maintained better, um, as well as recreation and tourism and some cultural values. 
this is a very, very small list of some of the things that biodiversity does. And so I want us to figure out a way to quantify it because it obviously is pretty important. There's two things that can make an area biodiverse. So the first is called species richness. So species richness is just straight up the number of species that are in an area. So if that was represented by these little dots and all the colors represent different species, then here in A, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different species. That's our species richness. If we look over at B, there's actually 10 different types of species here as well. There's the red ones, this grayish one, the orange ones, um, etc. So there's the same number, same species richness in both A and B. But A and B obviously look pretty different. And the difference between these two has to do with species evenness. So species evenness has to do with how close in numbers each species in an area is or are. Um, so here with A, all 10 of these species have an equal number, so it's very, very even. Um, versus B, there's a really small number of everything except for red, so this is not very even. Both species richness and species evenness contribute to biodiversity. We'd actually say that group A here is more biodiverse than group B because there's just more richness, more evenness. Both of those things play a role. Because both of those things, species richness and species diverse, um, ooh, species richness and species evenness, because both of those things um, contribute to biodiversity, we need a way to put both of those things together and get a number that'll help us to quantify the idea of biodiversity. There's a lot of different ways to do this, and different authors are going to do it different ways, different publications prefer different things, but one thing you'll see a whole lot of is the Simpsons Diversity Index. There's actually a couple different versions of this index itself, but we're going to talk right now about the Simpsons Reciprocal Index, which is sometimes just straight up called Simpsons Diversity Index. The way we're going to calculate it is using this little formula right here. D is going to be diversity. Capital N is going to be the total number of species, I mean the total number of individuals found in that area. Little n is going to be the number of a certain type of species. So we'll talk about that in a little more detail. Let's say we've got a lake and we wanted to figure out the diversity of the fish. And we had 934 brown trout, 733 smallmouth bass, 34 catfish, etc., etc. I've got all these straight up numbers, individuals, different species. I want to figure out diversity. Here's how I do it. I like to start by creating a little chart for myself where I've got all my different species and I have the number of each. Now, if I'm looking at this, I know that I've got capital N, the total, that would be just adding up all of these different numbers. I also have little n, which has to do with this number and this number and this number. And I see that I have to sum those up. So the next thing I want to do is figure out this bottom part so that I can sum that up. So I've got n, which is going to be the number. So let's say for the brown trout, we've got 934. And I'm going to multiply that number by n minus 1. So 934 minus 1 is 933. So the first thing I would do is I'd take 934 times 933. I would get 871422, and I would write that down. I would do the exact same thing for my next small n. 733 times 732. 536, 556. Five, I would do the same thing for the next small n. 34 times 33. I would write that down. But I see I need the sum of that to be put into my final equation. So I'm going to take all these numbers. I'm going to add them up. That's going to be 5474620. That's going to be the bottom of my equation. I also need capital N. Capital N is just the sum of all of them. So I add up all of these numbers here. And I'm going to take that 3970 and multiply it by 3969. So N times N minus 1. And I get that full number here. The relationship between this number and this number is going to allow me to find the diversity of the area. So I just take this number divided by this number. I'm actually in this case going to get 2.88. If this number is larger, that means the area is more diverse. If this number is smaller, it means the area is less diverse. 
So using this equation is not hard, it's a little tedious, but not hard at all. Understanding where the equation comes from is a little bit more complicated. So let's go back to the idea of evenness and the idea of richness. So richness is going to have to do with the number of different species that are here. So by looking at the small n and by summing those up, I'm validating the number of different species that exist. But it also has to do with evenness. So we see that those that have a higher number are going to have a higher n value. They're going to be represented a little bit more in my value. So if there's only one catfish or if there's a smaller number of catfish, it's going to play less of a role in creating my final value, if that makes sense. So this is a way just to take into account richness and evenness. There are some different indices that do that same thing, but this one is just looking at both of those things put together. Again, higher number, more diverse, lower number, less diverse. 2.88 is fairly biodiverse for an area. Um, if we were looking at different types of ecosystems, we're gonna end up with different diversities. And we'll talk a lot more about how to apply that and what that means. So I hope this was helpful in thinking a little bit about biodiversity and how we quantify it. We will go forward in the next couple of days and we'll really think about conservation and how we can maintain the future of our planet.